After his second trip back to Tahiti, he went back to Europe and then he came back again, uh, he really, in the last couple of years in Tahiti, was not making art. Uh, was, he had been sick, uh, a lot of different things happened. And he just, I think, decided that he, he wanted to go on to some place that he had heard about, certainly, when he was in Tahiti, that he thought would be what he was really looking for in an untouched place, and that was the Marquesas Islands. He had been talking about the Marquesas from the time he first arrived in Tahiti and was greeted with much more warmth than he had ever found in Tahiti. Women and a White Horse is one of the very last paintings that Gauguin paints. It's from 1903, the year that he dies, and it shows this beautiful, lush landscape and three women and a white horse in the foreground. And as you move back into the brilliantly colored trees, your eye climbs up and sees a little white cross on the hill. Gauguin's anti-church sentiments were extremely widely known. This to me is a statement of the inability that Gauguin had to ever escape the watchful eye of the Catholic Church. His last paintings I find kind of ecstatic in a way, um, and they do achieve a, a true spirituality, which is something that I think he was always looking for. Well, he was a major rebel, um, one of the few of his generation who said, um, Paris is not the be all end all. He, in the course of his life, exemplified a quest to see if he could find another way of looking at himself through looking at others. And by the end of his life, you can see um, a trajectory of someone who definitely stepped out of Europe in a big way and tried to wake up the world to what else was going on.